Regardless of what uh, Kurdish politicians may have to say, the Kurds from the four parts of Kurdistan that live in the United States must be together and they must come together. And since the biggest guarantee in our hands is uh, unity amongst Kurds ourselves, the Kurds in the diaspora can also impress upon their political leaders and their political parties the need for unity and cooperation among ABD ile ilişkilerimiz e, eskisine nazaran daha kurumsal e, düzeyde artarak devam ediyor farklı olarak. And uh, compared to the past, our relations with the United States now are on a more institutional level than they have been uh, now as a party. Burada bir temsilciliğimiz var, resmi bir temsilciliğimiz ve temsilciliğimiz üzerinden sürekli e, Amerika hükümet odayındaki NGO'larla ilişki geliştirmeye çalışıyoruz. We have an official representative and representative office here and uh, through that office we continuously try to establish relations with uh, political institutions, leaders, and also NGOs. <coughs> and uh, I like to say that we worked quite hard to get a visa for Mr. Sayan, uh, Mr. Salih Kusnu, the chairman of the POID, so he could come here and speak for himself. Unfortunately, our efforts to get a visa for him were unsuccessful, and we hope that in the future he'll have the chance to come here and speak about the situation first and to all of you directly. Thanks. Well, my answer will be brief. Uh, as far as uh, what Kurdish Americans can do here. First of all, I really think it's very, very important you take local party politics out of this. Don't pay attention because this is this party or that party or this thing. We're all Kurds here. You should look at the issue as Kurds, not as any political party. I think mean, that's the key. If you do that, I think you'll, you'll be successful. Second, participate in the political process. You can't just be amongst yourselves, all by yourselves, and never interact. With your school board, with the congressional campaigns, and all of that. Once a congressman, who we you know, we asked him, how do you pick up the issues, on, especially on foreign affairs, because we're talking about. What is important is, well, we get two letters about an issue 
it gets a lot of attention. If we get three letters, that means we have to follow that issue. So write to your congressmen, write to your senators. Most of you probably live in Virginia, at least most of you were when I was here. You have two senators from Virginia, Senator Kane and Senator Wood. They're both Democrats. They can both talk to the president, write to them, call their offices about these issues. I think it's very, very important. But we have come a long way. I remember I came to this National Press Club when Tansu Chiller was prime minister. Uh, I don't know if it was this room or another room. But I was sitting, I was with two other Kurdish colleagues. Actually, both of them, when I told them I'm going to ask Tansu Chiller a question about the Kurdish issue in Turkey, they both left me. They, they said, we don't want to sit with you because uh, our parties have a relationship with, uh, with Turkey and we will be put on the blacklist by our party or we can't go to Turkey. That's how it was. We have come a long way. Now we have Salah al we have Sazdeen, we have our uh, uh, friend Nazmi here. And here's a, a, a political party, a Kurdish political party from Turkey is officially forming a function. So we have come a long way. We have to build on it. We have to be together. We have to be united. Please, a question only. Uh, the gentleman here is second. And the, the lady right there is third. Uh, I think. Uh, Mr. Please, very short because we don't have time. Very short comments. When I came to the United States back in 1966, the population of Kurd in the United States was 15. 15. However, we kept contact between us. And right now, what I am saying to get the United Free Kurdistan or to get all the rights of the Kurd, we have few things. First, unity. You as Dr. Benjamin did also point it out. The second thing happened to me, we have money. We have a lot of oil all over Greece, specifically, I think, by our current uh, center in Kyrgyzstan government, they have and can, they can make money. You know, and in addition to that, education. They spend money on it and educate it. Now, somebody says, well, United Free Kurdistan is a dream. What I am saying is a dream if you believe in it, it's a reality. süreçle ilgili eleştirilere katılıyor musunuz? Sürecin bir parçası olarak CHP'nin e, önerilerini nasıl buluyorsunuz? Teşekkür ederim. So the question of Mr. Demirtaş is, do you agree with Mr. Tanrıkulu's criticisms of the process and how can you see the CHP playing a role in the process? <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> 
Mr. Salahuddin, uh, I didn't want to teach him to go be a little bit more. He's not a little bit more. I'm sorry, I'm Of course, uh, the criticisms of the current process by Mr. Kadrokulu and the CHP definitely uh, are worth considering. It's, there are very serious problems and it's evident that uh, the process is not unfolding exactly in the way we could wish it to. Uh, we might be able to say that our point of disagreement with the CHP is as follows. The difference between us is that we stay inside the priest process and uh, try to participate even as we have these criticisms and that uh, we try to address them by participating in the process. Uh, on the other hand, the CHP, with its reservations, chooses to remain outside of the process. That's the difference. And I'm not saying that uh, everything else is like, exactly the same between us. We don't especially agree on everything, that's all I mean. But in order to uh, put the peace process on a positive track and to remedy all of its shortcomings, I think we have to be inside the process. Uh, but of course, his concerns and criticisms about the process are uh, worth considering, and they have some basis. Okay, so the mic here, please. Right here. And then I, I'd like to see more hands there. Let's take, uh, yeah, she was actually, you said daughter. Right? I was uh, Yes, okay. Here, there, and then that lady right there. Let's take some ladies' questions. Uh, my question is for Katha. You mentioned in your speech very important point, in my good and uh, Mr. Asad Bilal mentioned that, how we can do that? If there is a for for that, why we don't see a new Trump yet? Thank you. Can you please repeat again? We missed the question. If there are efforts, and why don't we see the results? Yeah, well, about the five words, about you mentioned that, and uh, how how we can do that, and if there is effort for that, why we didn't see uh, any result yet? My question is for Mr. Karnikulu. Um, so the, the one thing that was conspicuously absent from your talk was the, the right to education in one's native language. And if this is a constraint that is imposed to you by the party, I want to ask how you see those constraints playing out in the future as you try to position yourself as an actor in the peace process. Okay, just uh, I think the best thing to do for unity is to 
really uh, much easier to do it abroad in countries like the United States, in Germany, in Sweden, whatever, because everybody mixes. And you're a little bit away from the local party politics, whether it's in you know, southern Kurdistan, in Rojava, or other places. I think you can do it there. And actually, we, uh, we took some very good steps uh, in this regard in 1988 and before that when we were working on forming a Kurdish organization and the KNC was formed, I mean, Kagas is aware of that and some of the other friends who are here. Uh, and to an extent, it was that organization that actually brought the Kurdish issue to the forefront when we had hundreds of thousands and perhaps millions in the mountains of Kurdistan, uh, in Turkey, in Iran, you know, all subject to extinction, basically. Uh, of course, these television images were very, very forceful. But on the other hand, there was no party political organization. It was only the KNC that made the efforts, went to the State Department, to the White House, and did the whole thing here. And it was very important. I think that, and that, and the reason it was successful because we were all together. We were all together. We, you know, we didn't ask who belongs to what party and all that. And I think that's what we did. Dr. Khaylan is exempt from making comments because he's the founder of KNC. Thank you. Let's move on. So, uh, if you have that uh, question, was it too? Uh, what did we answer? Öncelikle şunu ifade edeyim. Yani ana dilde Ana dil hakkı temel bir insan hakkıdır. Ana dil eğitim konusu da geldiğimiz noktayı altını çizerek söylemek istiyorum. Dünden farklı olarak, yani yakın geçmişten farklı olarak. Ana dilde eğitim meselesi Türkiye'de siyasi kutuplaşmanın, doğdaklaşmanın o dağ noktası haline gelmiş durumda. O nedenle ana dil meselesini, ana dil eğitim meselesini siyasi tartışmanın ve kutuplaşmanın öncelikle o doğa olmaktan çıkartmamız lazım. Çocuk hakları sözleşmesinde yazdığı gibi çocuğun veya eğitim alanının yüksek yararı neyi gerektiriyorsa ona uygun eğitim modellerini geliştirmesi lazım. Bu eğitim modellerinin ne olacağı konusunda da pedagogların eğitimden çalışması lazım. Biz de parti olarak çalışma içerisindeyiz. Türkiye'ye bu konuda bir önerde bulunacağız. Yani ana kriter çocuğun veya eğitim alanının yüksek yararı. Tabii bunun yanı sıra anayasanın değişmesi lazım. Anayasanın 42. maddesi ana dilde eğitimi yasaklanmış durumda yani. Aynı zamanda değişmesi lazım.
Thank you. So let's go to the question uh, for Zine, and then uh, and then this would be the last question because we have to leave in five minutes. Thank you. So the, the question was with regard to whether there is a possibility that Kurdish entities and Kurdish groups could become allies of the United States. Uh, I think if if you think about allies uh, and alliances in the traditional sense, that is not on the horizon yet. I think we are moving into a direction where a lot of people. Uh, think about uh, issues in very, very different ways. And the situation in the region is so dynamic that you have to re-evaluate uh, every two weeks what uh, uh, who, who, who potential partners might be. I think what we need to do is uh, to have a consistent discussion here in Washington and in policy circles in the United States and draw attention to the changes that have been taking place in the Kurdish regions. And then I think Kurdish organizations also can make it impossible to ignore them. Um, by pursuing um, uh, positions of uh, further deepening democracy, by um, clarifying that they uh, are, uh, are capable of organizing social and political entities with a high degree of diversity, where rights of people that come from different backgrounds are respected, and from a US position that needs to take place within the current borders of nation states. You, we can, I think, have a discussion about federal structures in uh, Iraq uh, and about uh, what to do in Rojava and uh, with regard to cultural and political rights in Turkey. But a discussion that would uh, uh, depart from the uh, position that uh, the, the end goal is changing those borders, I think that is not something that would be in the interest of the United States. It also, I think, would ultimately not be in the interest of the Kurdish people, uh, and this is where I, the only point where I would disagree with the uh, with the governor. The Westphalian peace in 1648 was an attempt to pacify Europe, and the key to do so was to make territory and religion and ethnicity identical. And you created relatively homogeneous nation states where one religion was uh, the one that the king would uh, exercise. And what we need to be aware of is that it is in the best interest of all people in the region to build diverse nation states where people have rights and these rights are guaranteed and respected and not try to redraw borders. Good luck. Uh, I think uh, we can see, I'll give you two examples of how borders were redrawn. Uh, despite uh, objections from the United States. It was 1990, August 1st, in Kiev, when President H. Bush advised, and his speech clearly mentioned, and I think the, the speech is referred to now, uh, Chicken Kiev speech or something like that, by the way. Uh, when he outlined the dangers of Soviet Union falling apart. Well, we saw what happened to the Soviet Union. Uh, June 22nd, 1991, Secretary of State James Baker mentioned that Yugoslavia cannot break apart. Well, I think if they have thought about finding a way to make these people live together like they did in uh, the peace of uh, West uh, Fairly because all these people, all these places were fighting each other. Uh, I think we could have avoided about 300,000 dead uh, uh, Bosnians and a lot of other tragedies that happened after that. So as far as uh, if you have a broken Iraq or a broken Syria, constant in war between each other, why isn't it in the interest of the United States to have at least one of them to be peaceful and friends to their democracy and human rights. And why isn't it not in the interest of the Kurdish people uh, to be that if the alternative is to live in constant civil war under despotism and all of that. So I think, I, I really disagree with you on, uh, on that. And I think uh, a lot of people have uh, come around, there, there were a lot of people that had the, the same ideas about unified Iraq and all of that. I think if we can get a unified Iraq, where it's true federalism or a confederalism between three regions, uh, like Vice President, President, President Biden uh, 
called for it is this famous article with Leslie Gunn in 2006. Uh, we, we might have avoided what's going on. Uh, but if the alternative is to live with these conditions, I think obviously uh, we can save even part of Iraq is better than losing all of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry we cannot take any more questions, but we have to hand uh, over the mic to Mr. Salah and Mr. Tarsh to uh, say a few things on some closing remarks. Son birkaç cümleyle e, konferansı e, sonuç almak istiyorum. Önümüzdeki saatte cümle son derece kritik, son derece önemli olacak bizler açısından. From our point of view, the days and hours ahead of us are going to be extremely critical. E, Rojava Kobani'deki gelişmeler nasıl seyredecek? Önümüzdeki saatte de günlerde bunları bunu somut olarak görmüş olacağız. We're going to see concretely in the coming hours and days just how the situation in Rojava and Kobani is going to uh, end up playing out. Uh, within a day or two, a delegation of our parliamentarians is going to go to Imralda Island to meet with the, the distinguished Sergio. Ve uh, en azından Rojava'daki gelişmeleri de kapsayan ve işine karşı açık bir tutum alacak bir hükümet e, politikasının e, İmralı'da tartışılmış olmasını veya tartışma açılmasını umut ediyor. And we hope that in Imralı we're going to uh, debate possibilities of, in terms of uh, complaint the Turkish government to take an open position against ISIS and uh, clarifying its stance on Kobani. Biz Sayın Öcalan'ın bu kritik süreçte e, her zaman olduğu gibi çözüm yanlısı bir rol oynayacağını biliyor inanıyoruz. We know and we believe that, as always, when it comes to uh, Rojava and Kobani, Mr. Rojalan is going to play a determinative, determinative role in favor of peace and solution. Hükümetin de Kobani vesilesiyle ortaya çıkan bu derin güvensizliği bir anda yeni bir politikayla e, güven ilişkisine dönüştürecek bir e, değişiklik yapmasını bekliyoruz. Hükümetin de Kobani'deki politikalardan, hatalı politikalardan vazgeçerek e, Kürtler ve Türkler arasındaki bu güvensizliği derinleştiren politikaların vazgeçmesini bekliyoruz. We expect the government to reverse its uh, problematic and incorrect stance on Kobani and give up the policies that have created a lack of trust and uh, animosity between the Kurds and Turks. Önümüzdeki hafta Ankara'da hükümetle yapacağımız bütün görüşmelerde e, bu konunun e, Altını çizerek e, yeni bir e, politika oluşması için uğraşacağız. And in all of our meetings with the government next week, we're going to underscore this point and uh, use all of our efforts to develop uh, a new policy. E, bizler yeni yüzyılda e, Orta Doğu'da yeni bir güç olarak, Kürt halkı e, yeni bir güç olarak e, tarih sahnesine yeniden çıkıyor. Bunun e, farkındayız. Uh, we're aware that in this uh, new universe, in the new Middle East, the Kurds are emerging as also a new factor, and a new power, and a new force. İnsanlık ailesinde, halklar ailesinde, devletler ailesinde hak ettiğimiz yeri alacağız. Buna, buna yürekten inanıyoruz. İnsanlık ailesinde, halklar ve devletler ailesinde hak ettiğimiz yeri alacağız. Uh, we believe that we're going to take our deserved place in the family of nations and in the family of peoples. Ve Elbette ki hiçbir doğum sancısı olmuyor. Kürtler de şu anda o yeniden doğ, doğuşun, e, özgür doğuşun sancılarını çekiyor. And uh, of course no birth, no emergence of a new nation unfolds uh, without pain. And right now Kurds are uh, enduring some of that pain that comes during processes of change. Bu ilerlemenin hiçbir vahşi örgüt, hiçbir barbar hareket tarafından durdurulan, durdurulamayacağını bütün dünyanın yakın zamanda e, göreceğini umut ediyoruz. We hope that the entire world will see that the rise of the Kurds will not be stopped, halted by any uh, barbaric, horrific organization like ISIS. Bir kez daha e, burada bulunan bütün dostlarımıza, Kürtlere, Türklere, Amerikalı dostlarımıza ayrı ayrı teşekkür etmek istiyorum. And uh, once more I would like to thank all of my friends, Kurdish, Turkish, uh, American and otherwise. Burada one by one. Suriyeli, Yezidi, Ermeni 
Dostlarımız, kardeşlerimiz var. Onlara ayrı ayrı teşekkür etmek istiyorum. And I'd like to uh, individually, one by one, thank our Suriyani, Azidi and Armenian friends as well. Ve bu halklar arası dayanışmayı büyüttüğümüz olarak da hep birlikte e, özgürce barış içerisinde yaşayacağımıza e, dair e, umudumuzu büyüterek başlıklarına ayrıldığımızı belirtmek istiyorum. I'd like to say that we're leaving Washington hoping that we're going to build up this uh, solidarity and amity between peoples and that as a result of that we're going to build a peaceful united future together. Yine konferansımıza katılım gösteren bütün konuşmacılara partim adına şükür anlamını sunuyorum. And I thank everybody who participated and spoke in the conference on behalf of my party. Ve tabii Washington temsilciliğimiz e, Mehmet Seyit Rıza arkadaşlarımız başta olmak üzere buradaki bütün arkadaşlarımla tek tek isim saymak istemiyorum ama kimi sayısına bir isim kalacak. Bütün arkadaşlarıma ayrı ayrı teşekkür ediyorum. And I'd like to thank all of my friends here as well, especially uh, Mehmet and Seyit Rıza in the Washington Representative Office. I know we can't name all of the friends, but I'd like to praise them especially. Hepinize daha özgür, barışlı ve mutlu bir yarın diliyorum. Teşekkür ediyorum. I wish you all a peaceful, uh, free tomorrow.